why is good design important for VR and AI? And this GIF is so critical to me. And this is something that I try to show everybody because if you look at this, um, the elements that are real in this is, of course, the woman walking, the two men walking behind her, the taxi, and then everything else is overlaid on top. And basically, what this scene is trying to do, whoever built the scene, this is also, by the way, this is I think, I'm pretty sure this is sarcastic. I don't think anybody actually built this as a real viable product that's out there. Um, so basically, what this person was trying to get to is that it's really annoying to have so much in front of you trying to grab your attention. And this is something that is that is key to all user experience across all media, including web, including mobile, including everything. But it's suddenly so critical, specifically in immersive media, because you have so much room to tell user things. You have so much room to tell them things, to give them call to actions, and to give them stories to tell them. And so um, this is something that basically I'm trying to tell you is take away from this. So um, basically, at the very low end of the point, you have um, physical environment, which is what we are in right now, or allegedly. Um, a lot of people believe that we are living in a simulation, which is um, yet to be disproven. So um, we'll see where that takes us. Um, but a little bit further down that line, we're in augmented reality. But what that means is basically you have either your phone that's, you know, put up you know, in front of you, or you have a device on your head. And basically what it is, is it projects 2D, 2D elements onto real life. Um, this can, there's a lot of use cases for that, including you know, construction, for example. There's an awesome company in LA that specifically specializes in augmented reality for construction. And then further down that spectrum, we have what we call mixed reality. And mixed reality is basically just like AR, but you're allowed to interact, you're able to interact with the elements that are up in front of you on your face with the device on your head. So they're very responsive to when you interact with them. Um, basically, they are as if they were real, but they're CG. And then at the end of that spectrum, you have virtual reality. That's where you're completely immersed in an entirely new reality. You, you don't have any sense of the real world at all. So I came into this project as artist and creative director. And one really interesting challenge with this, just like the Mary Claire project, was that even though this person, this DJ's audience was a very niche one audience, they were also not at all familiar with virtual reality. And they wanted to use this opportunity as sort of a pop-up experience. So they had pop-up experience at different malls where the artist was, you know, used to performing, and they would bring the users in, sorry, bring, sorry, used to call it the users. They would bring their, their his fans in, and um, they would experience this virtual reality experience. And what was something that was really interesting about them is that they were so, so passionate about his work. And so something that we decided to do was to actually tell this music video through the perspective of a first person. So what this means is that, I don't know if you know this in different parts, and I'll cover this a bit um, in a couple minutes, but what you are able to see when you put on the headset is you, when you look down, you're able to see the DJ's body. And so we created a camera array that was a 360 first person point of view camera. So it not only captured everything around him, it also captured everything down here. And so when the viewer looks down, they're able to see his hands, his body moving. And so they kind of are stepping into his shoes in quite a literal way. Um, so this is a very interesting challenge because um, we've found through a lot of you know, first person POV work that um, this kind of, first of all, gets rid of a lot of the motion sickness issues that used to come with VR. Um, how many of you have gotten motion sickness in virtual reality? It's a pretty common issue. I don't want to say that it's, um, it, it's detrimental or anything like that, but it's a fairly common issue. And we found through um, a lot of studies of our own, but also looking up, you know, um, a lot of studies through different universities, especially Duke, for example, whenever they put just a little simulation of a nose in virtual reality, suddenly the user felt completely grounded. Suddenly they felt, okay, I'm in this experience, this is me, and I'm going to be able to feel very comfortable. Suddenly everything switches in their brain, this feels natural to me. As opposed to being sort of a floating camera across the 360 degree environment. So this is something that really enabled us to play around with a lot of different you know, experimentations, including slow motion. Um, slow motion is generally a, a pretty big no-no in VR because um, this kind of adds to the whole motion sickness drama. Um, and so we were able to play around with that. We were able to play around with reverse. We were able to play around with a lot of cool effects in that music video. Um, but again, one thing was that the viewers were not experienced with virtual reality. And so what we ended up doing was we wanted to introduce a classic 2D screen for them. Whenever they put on the headset, we introduce a classic 2D screen for them, and then slowly and gradually that 2D screen expands into a 360 environment. So they get a chance to get acclimated to that experience. Okay, I'm in a 360 environment, but all I see right now in front of me is this 2D screen, and then suddenly the 2D screen 